here to talk about the giant takeaways from Euros and some of the problems creeping up in modern era Yu-Gi-Oh. Don't make 30% of you guys have not smashed the living crap out and subscribe and smash it so we can climb up the 100k ladder here. I want to talk about Euros from day one here. Everything that we saw, Top Cut is currently unpacking itself here. We'll be back tomorrow to talk about how the event went, but how is everything going here? Well, <sighs> from what I saw uh, from a majority of players talking about the event, um, there were a lot of interesting interactions here within the game itself. So the first one, people lost their minds when Psychic Life Transfer showed up and won a match in time. Okay. Standard time rules, it's a card you can access in your extra deck. Are time rules fair? No, not by any stretch of the imagination. But it's the first time that Psychic Life Transfer has seen competitive play in so long. All right, if you also are paying attention to YouTube, the amount of these uh, unsolicited bots, as we're going to call them, showed up. That was particularly interesting. You're like, oh, wait a minute, Rob, you're just giving highlights here? A little bit, ladies and gentlemen. Um, there were a lot of interesting takeaways that I saw um, just being posted on social media that kind of wrapped up, you know, the event and people's generalized experiences. And to be honest with you, Psychic Life Transfer was one of the biggest hurrahs that we'd seen in a while and then kind of just summarize like the weekend i feel like we've been in the the sprite purgatory for so long but when you were kind of looking at this event the thing i've heard from a lot of players was tier elements was everywhere the the thing is tier elements ceiling is so far beyond really modern era Yu-Gi-Oh that it's kind of crazy but the problem is it's it's still RNG the deck that's kind of where like a lot of players choose to look at Sprite because as a lot of people are calling it it's very brain dead you know you set up your board you do your thing and you're good to go well I kind of agree with that um but once again, you know, if you get rewarded for playing RNG.deck versus the big, easy-to-go deck, yeah, it, it's that easy, ladies and gentlemen. Now, one big thing that carried over from the NA event to here is players still are not playing around Nibiru. I don't know if you guys caught this or paid attention to the stream over the weekend and previously, but it's almost like players have, uh, they just don't care about Nibiru. I, I feel like players are just like, eh, you have it, you have it. Like, is that the general consensus that the community is having right now when it comes to Nibiru? Because players just aren't playing around it. I, I watched a guy that made an Al Mirage, sat up, he was he was like, all right, cool, I'm gonna play around the Ogre. Didn't play around the Nibiru, just gets Nibiru on the fifth summon. You know, a lot of people have, I was reading a lot of comments too, that people were like, oh my God, you're so bad for leaving in the Nibiru versus Sprite. Honestly, it's not that bad. I mean, I understand that gigantic Sprite locks you, okay? But if your opponent goes through five summons, you know, depending on how much gas and how much extension plays that they really open here, congratulations, you know, you're good to go. Like, you kind of pick your poison in that matchup. Do you, you really have to decide if Nibiru is going to be the thing to go with or not. So that was a really, really big takeaway here was nobody's playing around Nibiru. And it's perfectly understandable that at a higher level of event like this that you're just like... You can't play around the Nibiru, but then there's always optimized play versus, um, what's it called, you know, the, the more sloppier play. So I guess you're kind of picking your poison in that overall regard. So I, I guess go from there. Now I got to talk about Garuda here, which was the newer, the new fusion here out of power of the elements. I have seen so many people talk about how Garuda changed game. Yugi is a completely different beast now, now that they've made this card. And it, it's crazy to me, right? That making a better generic fusion monster would open up doors. It now gives people the chance to play Super Poly in the main deck. Hmm. Hmm. It's almost like that's why the card was designed in the first place. Because maybe Konami looked at, like, the crazy power of Sprite and went, hmm, maybe we need to do something about this. Maybe we need to create something to kind of round out the matchup. Now, Super Poly being a main deck option right now, I think it's quite interesting. Um, having a generic fusion card that you just snap your fingers and now its existence warps the entire landscape of competitive play, 
Okay, that's a good thing, ladies and gentlemen. Like, it really is a giant win here, I would say, at least for what Konami expected to be a very crazy format. They can kind of just round out these option trees here and go, oh, okay, easy enough. Um, now, there's a giant interesting debate right now between... Do we play... Well, I mean, Dark Ruler No More pretty much should be mandatory at this point. I, I just want to point that out. Like, if, if you're looking at playing this this particular format right now, you better be dusting off those Dark Ruler No Mores because you need to be able to break boards. All right? There's a giant argument right now of do we just play board breakers or do we look at playing hand traps? Ash can be very impactful and it cannot be very impactful. Hmm. You know, I feel like we've heard that argument before, right? Right? Hmm. There's always going to be formats where I feel like Ash just kind of takes a backseat and doesn't feel, you know, as a good card. But once again, I will tell you that Dark Ruler No More definitely is going to be something that you're going to want to dust off and make sure that you have in your possession right now. Because, man, oh man, I'm not going to lie, like, competitive Yu-Gi-Oh boards right now are some of the most disgusting things I've seen in a very long time. And I was also hearing people, you know, complaining about, oh my god, no, I set up all these negates, I negated my opponent's Mystic Mine, and down came the second one. And I'm just like, I mean, players, players are resulting to have to play very, very big floodgates because of particular boards that are being made right now. Well, Yu-Gi-Oh! Power Creep 101, who would have guessed? I also want to give a shout out to the virus cards, man. Epidemic Virus and Deck Devastation Virus. Both of these have been picking up steam in side decks, especially from what I heard out of this weekend. A lot of people were running into, you know, Deck Devies and Eradicator Epidemic Viruses, Game 2 and Game 3. And I'm just going to be honest with you, the virus card Cards can be a pretty disgusting blow. Like, if you're a sprite player, you open up like full combo, your opponent deck devies you, you're just like, oh, I guess I lose now. Like, those are kind of the trends that are going on right now. You know, it, it's actually kind of funny because I didn't think we'd ever go to a time where like deck devastation virus or, you know, epidemic would return back to the game as these crazy power cards in order to kind of counteract these lower power ceiling decks. And Oh boy, oh boy, was I wrong to see that. So that's that's incredibly nice. Now to spin back around here to the uh, to the tier elements thing. I heard a few tier elements players talking about this weekend that they added danger packages to their deck because they felt like their decks bricked too much. And basically by having those danger cards be present in their deck, they were basically designed to kind of bypass those bricks and gives you options to unbrick. They're basically just free draw ones, depending on your opponent's ability to snipe said danger out of your hand. Once again, you're playing an RNG dot deck. You have to understand that at the overall, you know, presence and how things are going right now. It, it makes sense that this is what we're looking at here. So overall from what I've heard, what I've seen, you know, once again, Top Cut is unpacking here. Tier Elements looks like it has entered in. People started to figure it out, which is very, very good. I would say it only took two weeks into the format for Tier to finally get a foothold here. Sprite is super toxic via the current competitive metagame. Um, a lot of players are also already looking at, you know, Tier Elements right now, and they're like, oh my gosh, you know, Looking at the Ishizu variant coming down the line here, they're already going, holy crap, like, this might be one of the most scariest decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! to ever exist. And my answer to that is, welcome to RNG, you know? When you can have one of the craziest end boards you can mill, depending on how it goes... That's crazy, but unlike, you know, good players out here, my mills are always crap, and I always end up just crying myself to sleep at these particular things. So, current problems with the game? Everything that we basically expected, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but overall, for stream, it was nice to see, you know, Psychic Life Trance show up. It's a shame to see the players are not playing around Nibiru. I mean, even if they might not be able to, it's still an interesting takeaway. And Sprite and Tier Elements power creep in the format is just so, so ridiculous. But what do you guys think? Please leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. Make sure you guys smash the crap out of that subscribe button. See your beautiful faces back here later in the day, guys. Peace out. Patrons, thank you.
Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.